All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to week seven. This is day one um, in econ of module nine, lesson four. And as everybody's saying in the chat, yay, taxes are here. And whether or not you like it, this is one of the fun realities of becoming an adult, especially when you start working. Okay. So those of you who already have a job, you probably already have a hint of this, right? Because you're like, I make so much an hour. And then when you get your paycheck, you're like, wait a minute, where all that money go? And you see the government takes it before you even get your hands on it. Okay. Um, when you go to buy a thing, sales tax. So in a lot of ways, you're already involved with taxes. Um, but filing your taxes is then the final step. Okay. Um, you know, once you start making some money. Okay. So if you make a hundred bucks here, hundred bucks there, probably not and stuff. But once you start making, you know, a consistent paycheck, even working part-time and stuff, then you have to do annually what's called filing your taxes. Okay. With the federal government, the everyone's favorite uh, part of the government, the IRS. Okay. I swear if I worked for the IRS, I don't think I would tell people I work for the IRS. Cause I feel like I don't care where you on the political spectrum. I would just get the look. Oh, I'm not talking to you about my personal business. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like, right. Am I wrong here? You know what I mean? I mean, we all need them, you know, like they have a job and stuff like that. We respect that, but I don't think anybody's excited to hear from the IRS ever. It's not like a great thing. Um, and stuff. Okay, so the standards um, that we're going to be looking at is alternatives and consequences of financial decision, um, evaluating um, taxes at the local, state, and federal level, because every state has a different tax system, local levels have a different tax system, and then there's a federal tax system. So whether or not you realize it, as you become an adult, you don't just pay one tax, you pay multiple taxes. Um, so that's why when I hear people talk about, we just need to raise taxes, I'm like, speak for yourself. I need to keep more of my money. And you believe me, you'll feel it. And maybe your parents feel it, especially with inflation and stuff like that. Um, and stuff. I need, I need less. taxes. Yes. I need less taxes. So careful who you vote for. All right. When people vote for funding programs and doing all these things, those sound great, but somebody has to pay for it. And usually that means you and me. So careful, uh, because that means less money in your pocket. All right. So we're going to evaluate the assessment and consumption of taxes at the local, state, and federal level. So that's our learning intention that we're going to be focusing on and just understanding how taxes work and kind of, again, getting your feet wet with understanding as you get into adulthood. And if you're working already, then you probably have some exposure to this. But as you start working, um, what you need to do. Quick housekeeping. Again, if something is showing a zero, um, that means it's missing or you didn't submit the right assignment um, and stuff. So you need to get that back in before it closes. All right. Um, SVAP testing, that's in March. So see the announcement um, if you're still wanting to do that. Um, yearbooks are on sale, cap and gown, they're $90. So again, you're, if you're graduating in May, this is something you, you need. Okay. They're not going to let you walk across the stage um, unless you have the cap and gown. You have to be in unison with everybody okay there's a look so you gotta you gotta embrace the look all right there's no school on monday yay okay president's day um and then prom is also coming up so if you are planning on going to prom tickets go on sale on 35 dollars um my suggestion you know, go with some friends you know like if you have a date great but if you don't it's still fun to go go to with friends you know it's it's a it's a it's a cool experience um, and stuff. So when in doubt, if anything is wrong, or if you have questions, just message me, right? Better to get their response um, than be in doubt about whatever's going on. Okay. Um, how many of you currently pay some sort of tax? Let's hear it in the chat. If so, what's the tax? Have you ever paid taxes? Or, so this could be you have a job and they take it out of your paycheck. This could be um, you filed taxes. Um, okay, working tax. Uh, this could be you've made a purchase and for teenagers even. Yes, you have to pay sales tax. So there's a there's there's tax and like I said, when people hear taxes, they think only the IRS and actually taxes, everyone pays taxes, just different levels of taxes. So if you go to buy something, sales tax, you just paid a tax. Anytime you go to buy something and there's sales tax there, you just paid tax. That's a form of tax, right? They're taking money on top of what it is, right? So yes, the IRS is the ultimate, but the reality is the moment you start making purchases, you are paying taxes. So here's what I'm getting at. One way or another, even if you're not working yet, if you buy anything, thumbs up, you are paying taxes, okay? Now, 
there are different levels of tax, right? There's taxes for purchasing and things like that when you have a job and then what you have to file to make sure that you paid enough to the federal government. When we think of tax season, that's IRS, that's federal level, okay? But local state level, we start paying those the moment you start consuming, the moment you start buying and stuff like that. So the goal is to help understand some of the differences between those taxes, okay, um, and stuff and how those work, okay, because we all kind of think of the IRS and filing taxes. And maybe we also need to be in tune with if you own a house, your parents pay property taxes. If you go to buy anything, right, most things, there's a there's an addition, right, to what you are paying. Um, there's taxes all over the place, utilities, um, the gas bill just recently went up and I love how the fee, this tax, this fee, this fee, those are forms of taxes um, that they tax on no matter your consumption that you have to pay. The water bill, they do that. Even if I have a low month of consumption, there's a minimum of $30 in just fees, just fees. And then on top of that, based on my consumption. So whether you realize or not, even utilities, there's taxes everywhere, all right, built into every system. So it's not just what comes out of your check then as you spend and anything you really consume, um, there's ways that they get them. It's it, it can get a little old, all right? It can be, so how many of you have been victimized by the IRS, all right? <laughs> so, um, this is great. Uh, if, movie plug, Mean Girls, great classic. If you are like Tina Fey fan or old, like anyways, great classic uh, comedy. So, um, and stuff. so obviously a meme. All right, we're going to jump in. We're going to look at the course arc and the notebook, start looking at the tax system, some tax um, vocab, and then tomorrow we'll go into more detail. All right, so let's jump over into Canvas. And we are going to go to modules. And we're going to scroll to 9.4. So remember, any class you miss, you can go back to the lesson and recording page and you can find those recordings. It also lists what to do and what's past due. OK, so instead of emailing me and saying, what am I missing? That's where you can go and find it. And that's where you'll be directed. All right. We're in 9.4 understanding taxes. So we're going to go to the notebook tab and get the notebook open. So 9.4, we're going to get the notebook open. So go ahead and open that up and launch it. Once it's launched, okay, you're gonna save it to your drive and make it shareable. And when we say shareable, we wanna do anyone with the link. Okay, anyone with the link. Okay, then we're gonna go, whoops, wrong one. Sorry, then we're gonna go back over into Canvas. We're gonna go next and we're gonna launch the course arc. Cause remember we do the course arc as we do the notebook. Okay, they go hand in hand. All right, so loading or understanding taxes. Okay, so we're gonna have this open and our notebook open. All right, side by side in tabs. Okay, give me a thumbs up once you have both open, please. So you have your course arc open and your notebook open. You're ready to go. So my goal is to get through one through four today. So we'll see if we can do that. We've got um, a bit to get through. So let's get started. The sooner we can get started, the more likely we are to go through it. Okay, so it gives the objectives and the learning intentions that we talked about, all right, um, and stuff. So kind of an outline of what it's going to look like. We're going to go to introduction. This is we're going to find our essential question. Can and should the government be fair to everyone? Okay. Well, I think we, we agree it should be fair, but the question is going to be, you know, can it be fair? So that's, and that's going to be an interesting um, debate of what is fair, right? Is it everyone paying the same percentage of their income? Is it a, a graduated tax? The more you make, the more, you, the more percentage wise you pay. What is fair, you know? Um, so that's why sometimes we see these questions and in principle, we all agree, yeah, everybody should, yeah, this should be fair. But then when it comes down to the nitty gritty, right? How do you define fairness? 
that can get um, that can that's where you can see differings of opinion. All right, go ahead and put that in number one. And then we're going to move on to vocab. All right, so there's only four this week. All right, so we'll go through it. So proportional tax. This is a tax for which percentage of income paid on taxes remains the same in all income levels. So some people think that proportional tax is fair. All right, so no matter what your income, let's say everybody pays 15% or 20%. So if I make $10,000, I pay 20%. If I make $100,000, I pay 20%. So that's one camp of or opinion or perspective of fairness, okay? Now, not everybody agrees with that. The person making 10,000 is probably gonna feel like that's not fair versus the person making 100,000. But again, it just maybe, it depends on people's perspectives, all right? Um, so let's do the next one, regressive tax. This one isn't on the list, but it's a tax for which income and taxes decrease with the increase of income. So you actually pay less percentage as you go up individual income tax so it's a tax based on person's earnings so this this is just a term for how much individually you end up paying at the end of the year based on your earnings and your deductions corporate income tax so this is the tax that companies pay withholdings so withholdings are on the taking of tax payments out of employees paychecks before he or she receives them right so if you have a job then you're going to start to feel this the taking of payments before you see the check all right so this is what i meant by when you get your first kind of real job you know the real paycheck you know what i'm saying um and you start to see that taken out you're like hey wait a minute i'm supposed to be making this much an hour and then you see how much they take and ooh, it hurts it hurts i don't know anybody that loves that Okay, tax deductions. This is where you then, when you work with the IRS and stuff, you're trying to find every way to tax deduct. Basically what that means is ways to reduce how much you have to pay. So for example, when you have kids, you can deduct them. Uh, when you have certain jobs or expenses, this is why a lot of people like owning their own business because you get like a lot more tax deductions and stuff. So anything you can do to pay less tax is a tax deduction, legally speaking, legally speaking, all right? So um, let me see, it's a tax for which the percent, okay, it's a variable amount that may subtract from their gross income. So it's a way to make your income look like less, so you pay less. The more you make, the more you pay. So it's a way to try to um, pay less taxes. Everybody does it, all right? Liberals and conservatives and everyone in between, everybody tries to work the tax system. So anybody that tells you that they enjoy paying taxes, Ask if they use a CPA, and if they use a CPA, then they're lying, okay? Because the only reason to use a CPA is to, one, make sure your taxes are correct, but also to find every loophole to pay less taxes. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's why you pay them, because they know the tax system, right? So you're like, find every way to save me money, okay? So seriously, I love it when somebody's like, I am fine with paying my tax. I'm like, do you use a CPA? then you like everybody else are trying and that's okay it's human nature you should you want to keep your money it's there's not wrong for wanting to keep your money okay operating budget is the budget of day-to-day -day expenses and then capital budget is the budget for spending on major investments so progressive tax is a tax for which as your income goes up you pay the percentage of ink i'm sorry the percentage of income pays in taxes increases on um, with on um, with income so for example, federally, we pay a progressive tax. So the less you make, percentage-wise, the less you pay. The more you make, percentage-wise, then the more you pay. So in the United States, we have a progress, federally speaking, we have a progressive tax system, okay? States often have a proportional tax system where sales tax is a set rate, right? I don't care if you make 30,000 or 100,000, you're gonna pay eight point something percent on that new car or you're gonna pay the same percentage of property taxes. So most states have a proportional tax, but the federal government has a progressive tax, which the more you make, the more percentage you pay. All right, let's go over to the vocab section. All right, let me scroll this down. They got rid of this part. Let me take that out. Okay, so progressive tax. I'll throw this in the chat for you. So that's what I mean, like oftentimes with taxes, this is where you just get into a little bit more of 
oftentimes people don't understand taxes. So when they have an opinion on something, honestly, they're just not really fully informed. Okay. So federally speaking, so anything that goes with the federal government, that is a progressive tax. So the more you make, the more they take. See it that way. Progressive, the more I make, the higher percentage you owe to the federal government. Okay. That's how that works. Within states, there's two types of taxes. There's income tax or there's sales tax. So for example, in Nevada, we have sales tax, right? So my income, they don't take a percentage, but every time I spend, they charge me a percentage, right? So that sales tax, every time I purchase or they make a sale, right? Then I pay a percentage to the government. In states like, let's say, Oregon, where I'm from, Oregon has an income tax. So you pay 10% of your income automatically to the state. Okay, this is tax deduction. So for example, in Oregon, when I had a job, the federal would take their percentage and then the state would take 10% every time before I got my check. So they take it out, no, whether or not I spend. Now, so it sucks because there's another 10% of my paycheck gone, but there was no sales tax. So when I go to purchase something, when it says it's 99 cents, guess how much I pay? 99 cents. So because I already paid my tax, do you see what I mean? So it's not that it's cheaper, it's just that I already paid my tax because they took it ahead of time. So we'll talk tomorrow a little bit. Here's progressive tax. We'll talk tomorrow a little bit about on um, which is better. Is sales tax better or is um, is income is income tax better? Um, is it better for them just to take a straight percentage right off your paycheck or is it better to charge me a percentage based on my sales? So we'll talk about that tomorrow, which one tends to end up being more money. OK, so we'll talk about that. Then you have states like California that have both. You literally pay income tax. So every check you make, they take 10 percent and you pay sales tax. So California is one of the few states where they have double tax. Hence why California gets a bad rap. They do. They, that's literally what they do. They're very expensive. OK, there is that. Let's go on to understanding tax. Give me a thumbs up once you have the vocab done. Like I said, we're going to keep it moving because um, I do want to get through some questions. Okay, so the importance of having taxes. All right, how long is this? Hi, okay. I'm Adrienne. We're going to watch 10 minutes of this, not 12 and stuff. Um, but this kind of goes over the importance of why we have taxes and why they are necessary. Nobody likes paying them, but we agree to do it at least to some extent because of necessity. So we're going to watch that here in this video a little bit. And then we're going to do three and four and we'll be done for the day. Adrian Hill, this is Crash Course Economics, and today we're going to talk about taxes. We're going to talk about why we have taxes, what they do for us, and why you should go ahead and take that raise that's going to bump you into the next tax bracket. Also, rebellions and the British Empire's bad judgment when it came to taxing colonies. <laughs> While your struggles with taxes and the tax code may seem particularly unpleasant to you today, people have been paying and complaining about taxes for a long time, way longer than any of us have been alive, or our parents, or our grandparents. Ancient Mesopotamians paid taxes in the form of livestock and labor. There are ancient Egyptian texts and tomb scenes showing evidence of taxes, tax collectors, and even tax shelters. Taxation and tax collectors also show up in the Bible over and over. Taxes appear in scripture as a necessity, like render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's. And tax collectors are in there as sinners right up with prostitutes. More recently, in 1927, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote, Taxes are what we pay for civilized society. Maybe it's time we forgive tax collectors, too. So we've had taxes pretty much as long as we've had records of organized society. But why? What are the goals of taxation? At the most basic level, taxes raise money for government services. Taxes are used to promote the well-being of society, at least well-being as defined by the government in power. They help us afford services markets might not pay for on their own. Things like public safety and national defense and education. Taxes can be used to protect the environment. They can help a country implement fiscal and monetary policies meant to push along economic growth. Taxes can be used as a way to redistribute wealth in a society, from people who have more to people who have less. This can happen in a couple of ways, some more direct than others. An income tax system that taxes high-income earners at a higher rate than low-income earners is one example, and we'll come back to that. 
government subsidies and vouchers, like food stamps and housing programs, also shift wealth. So do luxury taxes, basically an additional tax bill on expensive items like jet planes, expensive furs, and that really annoying diamond ring space on the Monopoly board. Governments can also use taxes to try to change people's behavior. Sin taxes on not good for you products like cigarettes and alcohol are meant to reduce consumption of unhealthy products. Gasoline taxes are meant to encourage people to drive less. France passed soda taxes to try to get people to drink fewer sugary drinks. Denmark passed and then got rid of a fat tax on foods that were relatively high in saturated fat. A handful of governments, including those in British Columbia, Ireland, and Chile, have instituted carbon taxes. These carbon taxes basically charge businesses and sometimes households for the amount of polluting greenhouse gases they use or create. These carbon taxes take different forms around the world. Residents of British Columbia, for example, pay an extra 6.67 cents per liter of gasoline as a carbon tax. For those of us in the U.S., Myanmar, and Liberia who don't use the metric system, that's about 25 cents per gallon. In Chile, power plant operators pay $5 for every metric ton of carbon dioxide that they release into the air. When economists talk about taxes, they sometimes divide them into direct taxes and indirect taxes. Direct taxes are paid by a person or organization to the government body that impose the taxes. These include property taxes and income taxes, where there's no intermediary, and I can't pass off the tax burden to someone else. Value-added taxes and sales taxes aren't exactly the same thing, but they're both good examples of indirect tax. They're collected by a store or seller or producer of goods, but they're actually paid by consumers. They're taxes that all consumers have to pay, regardless of how much money they make. A pair of socks at the mall down the street is going to cost me exactly the same as when a billionaire buys that pair of socks at the same store. Some economists say indirect taxes distort market prices and lead to one of the things most dreaded by economists, the Voldemort of economic outcomes inefficiency. Economists also characterize taxes as regressive, progressive, and proportional. Let's start with regressive taxes. Regressive taxes are typically applied across the board, and on their face they might seem equitable because everyone pays the same amount. But regressive taxes take a higher toll on people with lower income than high income earners. Sales taxes, especially on essential items, are considered regressive. That's why some places exempt food and prescription drug purchases from sales taxes. Some economists Economists argue that fees for things like hunting licenses, toll roads, and driver's licenses are also regressive. Why? Well, imagine two drivers go to the Department of Motor Vehicles to get a new license. One makes $200,000 a year, the other makes $20,000. Both will pay exactly the same amount for their driver's license. The license fee is a much bigger hit for the lower income driver. And that's why regressive tax takes a disproportionate toll on people with lower incomes. On the other end of the taxing spectrum, there are progressive taxes. Progressive taxes are more or less the opposite of regressive taxes in that they shift the burden of tax taxation to people who make more money and away from those who make less. In the United States, our income tax is a progressive tax, meaning individuals pay more in taxes as they make more income. But before you start worrying about whether making an extra hundred dollars this year is going to bump you into a higher tax bracket, it's worth understanding how the progressive income tax in the United States works. When the IRS calculates how much you owe in taxes, it uses marginal income tax brackets based on the amount of taxable income you earned in a year. These marginal tax rates represent the highest possible income tax rate you could pay. Right now, there are seven tax brackets. But no matter which tax bracket you find yourself in, you're not going to pay that rate for your entire income. Instead, your taxable income gets divided up into chunks that correspond to each tax rate, and you pay the associated rate on each of those chunks. For example, say you made $37,450 as a single filer last year. That would put you in the 15% tax bracket, but you'd still pay the lower 10% rate on the first $9,225 you made. So if you took the extra $100 and made $37,550, you'd be bumped up to the 25% tax bracket. But again, you'd only pay 25% on that extra $100. Your effective tax rate would be lower. The other thing you got to keep in mind with U.S. income taxes is there are a huge number of tax credits, tax exemptions, and tax deductions 
that reduce the amount people owe. So your tax bill will never be as painful as that 25% tax bracket might make you think. Many other countries around the world have their own progressive income tax systems. But it turns out it's difficult to measure just how progressive any country's total tax system is, especially compared to another country. It's not as easy as looking at countries with the highest marginal tax rates and deciding they have more progressive tax policy because so many other taxes and tax breaks come into play. In the U.S., some economists argue the progressiveness of our income tax code offsets the regressiveness of many other taxes we pay if progressiveness and regressiveness are even words. So we've covered regressive and progressive taxes. The third type of taxes are proportional taxes. Proportional taxes require the same percentage of income for all taxpayers, regardless of how much they make. A flat tax is an example of a proportional tax. You'll hear politicians touting flat taxes, in part because they're relatively simple compared to the U.S.'s current incredibly elaborate tax code, and because they kind of feel fair. Imagine a flat tax of 10%. The woman making $200,000 ends up sending $20,000 to the government, while the guy making $20,000 sends only $2,000. They both feel a 10% pinch. Economists who oppose the flat tax say that feelings have no place in the tax code. They argue a flat tax isn't as simple or as fair as it seems. For one, they say that getting rid of all the tax deductions and exemptions and credits we mentioned earlier could change a whole lot of the economic decision-making that happens from saving for retirement in tax-protected accounts to home ownership and donating to charities. All those activities are encouraged by the tax code we have now. Like we mentioned before, there are economists who argue the progressive income tax in the U.S. offsets some of our other more regressive taxes. They say a flat tax would shift the total tax burden away from the wealthy to the lower and middle classes, actually making our broader tax policy more regressive. All of this is complicated, even if it sounds simple. Before you buy into any anyone's plan to reform the tax code, take the time to really read into what it might mean to the economy and make sure you're comfortable with all the implications. Speaking of implications of tax policy, they can be incredibly serious and fascinating. A poor tax choice by a government can and has resulted in rebellions. Let's go to the thought bubble. One tax rebellion you've probably heard of is the American Revolution. After the Seven Years' War ended in 1763, Great Britain had a huge debt to pay off. It needed to raise revenue from somewhere and look toward the colonists in America. In 1764, the British Parliament started taxing molasses sales. In 1765, they enacted the Stamp Act, which added taxes to paper and legal documents. Colonists grew more and more frustrated with British officials, both with tax policies and other interventions. Anyway, you know how it goes. No taxation without representation, Boston Tea Party, a big war, the French get involved, and we end up with a free America with taxes and representation except in Washington, D.C. More recently, in India, there was another super interesting tax rebellion called the Salt March. In 1930, India, the British were in charge and they had laws in place that outlawed Indians from collecting or selling salt. Instead, they had to buy it from a British monopoly, which collected an 8.2% salt tax. Mohandas Gandhi decided to defy the Salt Act by walking 240 miles to the coast of the Arabian Sea to gather tax-free salt. Along his route, more and more Indians joined him in the peaceful civil disobedience. He got to the beach, picked up a piece of salt, and broke the law. Thousands of others followed his lead, making and selling non-British salt in a non-violent resistance. The Salt March was extensively covered in newsreels and newspapers, and it brought international attention to the largely non-violent Indian struggle for independence. All that because of taxes. Okay, because of time, we're going to keep going. But you can see, taxes have caused war, taxes have caused rebellion. So it's this fine line, right? It's, it's an essential because we need taxes to pay for schools, for roads, for first responders, for hospitals, for, um, you know, for, the, you know, community, low income housing, for um, WIC, on, um, you know, veterans, military, security. There's all these things, right, that we need, we need money to pay for that we all benefit from. We benefit from having roads and having schools and having first responders to keep us safe, our hospitals when we're sick, right, on, um, you know, firefighters if the house is on fire, if, um, you know, defense, what if somebody tries to attack us that we have military in place? So there's a lot of things that we need and somebody has to pay for it. So that's why I think collectively there's a general consensus that we need to pay taxes. The controversy becomes, right, how much is too much?
okay so hence welcome to representation right so so we all agree something has to be paid if we're going to live here we have to contribute right we have to provide essentials we have to do that the question though becomes when is when is enough enough when is too much when is it that they're going too far so we see with the american revolution the british weren't allowing the colonists representation they were just implying taxes without allowing them to vote in india something that literally salt was everywhere you could go it's like it's like uh it's like tumbleweeds here, right? Can you imagine they started charging us for tumbleweeds? Like I can go out to BLM and, you know, get one in five minutes. Like it's silly, right? It's everywhere. So sometimes we see examples where governments or people get greedy and you push the people too far. So the goal of this lesson is to try to analyze a little bit, you know, of understanding taxes, but also as you become adults and you start voting on, um, you know, you're going to push your limits. You're going to hit your limits when, Yes, you are happy to give maybe a portion of your paycheck, but you're going to reach a point where you're like, no, I, yes, this program, that it all sounds great, but at the end of the day, I can't, I don't have any more money to give. I need to keep my money to live. And so welcome now to politics, all right? And this is where economics and politics cross over. So this is number three, okay, which is asking us, as you read the importance of national tax, consider what might happen if the government cut taxes drastically. Okay, what would happen if they cut taxes drastically? We've seen this happen in times of war. We've seen this happen in times of economic or medical distress. So we saw taxes cut um, during the pandemic um, when people were losing jobs or it was harder to make an income. So we saw some taxes relieved to help people out. Okay, so taxes for citizens is one of the primary ways that the federal government makes money. So the federal government, when they talk about things, anytime the government says they're going to do something for you, that means they're going to, if they're going to do something extra, like, hey, wait, I'll do this for you also. Careful. When you go, yeah, that's great. That means they're going to tax you more. How are they going to pay for it? Okay, so careful. Not all things are a gift. You know, it costs you later or in your check. Yeah, I get this, but now I have less money month to month. Is that really fair? So that's where you have to balance. These taxes are used to provide goods and services to the country. As citizens, um, we expect to have, you know, national events, highway, education, and law enforcement, you know, provided by the government. Current taxation amounts also provide for many other servants, other services. And a drastic tax cut. So getting a tax cut, that also means a cut in services. Okay. Um, so for example, like retirement programs like Social Security that elderly you know depend on or medicare okay these these medical programs so it's a fine line you know cutting taxes usually that means cutting programs but also raising taxes that means taking more money from the people so the goal is to try to find balance okay now what you consider balance and i consider balance might be different but again at the end of the day balance being the goal all right let's get a little bit more done let's do number four Okay, the impact of taxation on, um, again, the more you pay, then the less you have. So the more you rely on the government to provide something, that means the more that everyday citizens like you and I have to pay into it. So again, does it mean all ideas are bad ideas, but also there has to be a balance of how much is too much, you know? Um, and especially for people in lower incomes, if you're making $50,000 a year versus $500,000 a year, $500,000 a year, you're probably not gonna feel it as much, right? But 50,000, you're probably paycheck to paycheck, right? You're just trying to keep the roof over your head and you're trying to, you know, keep food in the fridge. So when they talk about another program, you're like, I'm not worried about your program. I'm worried about providing for my family. So that's where, again, everything can sound good in theory, but there have to be limits, right? People can only take so much. Where we're going to pick up tomorrow is talking about progressive tax. The more you make, the more they take. OK, and how exactly that works. So we'll open up class with this video, but let's do number four before we go. So the importance of national tax, the impact of taxation. Why do you think the majority of American citizens consent to having their earnings taxed by the government? Once upon a time, the American you know, revolution, um, people weren't very excited about this. It's that it's not that the colonists were against taxes. So we'll talk a little bit more about progressive tax tomorrow. There's definitely a lot of opinions on that and stuff. Um, oftentimes people don't know exactly how it works. So tomorrow is about like helping us understand exactly how it works. That everyone says, say, pays the same percentage. It's the percentage as it increases. So the first 10,000 of your income is the same percentage. The next 
15,000 is the same percentage. So this graph right here is going to become really essential to understanding progressive tax. Okay. Everyone's first 25,000 is taxed at 15%. Then the next 50,000 is taxed at 25%. Then the next, so we're you know looking at different income examples. So the person making 100,000, they don't pay 30% on all of their income. They pay it on the last 25,000. They pay 25% on the that middle 50,000. They pay 15%. So you can see the more you make when they say the more you take, it's based on that percentage of income. So it's not on the entire income. So oftentimes people don't understand that. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to like progressive tax, but at least just understanding how it works. Okay. So once upon a time, taxes uh, were uh, were not wanted and led to the American Revolution. Over time, Americans realized we have to pay taxes, but we just want to be able to have a say in that. OK, Americans today automatically expect to have taxes taken out of their paychecks. So when you get that first real job, real paycheck, you'll see that. All right. But we understand that our taxes um, are the country's paycheck. So when the government is going to spend or overspend, that's often a political thing that people will run, will run on. Right. You know, cutting taxes or or not raising taxes, at least that's usually what people want to hear. It's like, OK, cutting it would be nice, but at least tell me you're not going to raise taxes because I don't know anybody who wants to pay more taxes. All right. So for today, we got through um, number four. All right. So um, we didn't do the near private. We did the video. OK, we started the course arc in the notebook. We got through one through four. All right. And then tomorrow we're going to get really into that progressive tax and understanding how the federal tax system works. And doesn't mean you have to agree with it, but at least understanding how it works and then different philosophies. OK, because the reality is that you can find equality is subjective. Right. And what you consider equal or I consider equal when it comes to taxes. And stuff often comes down to opinion um, and how do we interpret fairness when it comes to taxes. And I don't know that you can make everybody happy. So there's a lot of different philosophies. So we'll look at some of those tomorrow. OK, so you're free to go. Thank you so much. I will see you on Thursday and we will uh, wrap up the um, the course arc, the notebook. We're not going to do the entire notebook. I think we're going to cut off at like number 10. Um, it's because, again, it's really long. I don't these ones like the 14, 15 questions. I'm like, seriously, we, we don't have time for that. And then I'll give you the review sheet. OK, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye, everybody.